Do you want to talk with Tam? 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 Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam, everybody. Today is Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2021. And you are tuned in to Talk with Tam Utah. Yay! So let me thank my 43 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. I love you all. And like, like this one. Share it. Spread the word. Spread the now testament. <laughs> tonight's topic. Tonight's topic. It backfired. Hashtag it backfired. There are some people that once they become promoted, they, they think more highly of themselves than they ought to. They get their promotions and expect when they come into your presence that you are supposed to reference them in some manner. These people have a problem when others do not reference them as if they were God. And these people, because of their limited power, they have. Once they don't like you, they plot, scheme, and lie to destroy you. You got some supervisors that has caused employers many, many millions of dollars because how their supervisors have treated employees discriminatorily. And then how about the church? Some churches, some, some, some leaders will refuse to make room for your gift because you don't reference them and worship them as if they were God. So today we're going to find out, regardless, regardless to what they do to you, don't matter what they do to you, it's going to backfire. Today's topic, It Backfired, comes out of Esther 2 through 8. I'm going to give you some background before you can get to the backfire. <laughs> so here are some facts you need to know. King Ahasuerus was seeking a queen. And this Jewish young man, um, Mordecai, he set his niece up. And uh, when I read it, it, it was like they were on The Bachelor, that there were a series of girls that came. And when you read it, you'll find out that Esther won the contest. She became queen. Also, it should be noted that Mordecai, was also the man that saved the king's life. He heard that people were plotting to kill him. And he told his niece. Because nobody knew their relationship. And the queen, she wrote it. She, chrono, uh, she wrote it in a book that's gonna be very important later. During this time when the queen and all this shift came, it seems to me that there was a change in administration. Uh, a young man named Hammond. Hammond was promoted. And with this promotion, um, he was supposed to be referenced to all, but Mordecai 
because of his Jewish principles, he did. And I'm reading from Esther 3 and 5. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him did he reference then, it's an error, was Haman, Haman was full of wrath. Haman had let his anger develop into wrath because Mordecai would not reference him. So instead of Haman dealing directly with Mordecai, he requested that all the Jews were destroyed. And he got permission to the king. And he did it off of a narrow truth and a broad lie. He did not narrow the reason to why he wanted to kill Mordecai under the Jews. He kept it broad, saying that the Jewish laws were, were diverse, were different than the king's. But he didn't say the one law that it was, and it was to reference him. And it was one man. But the king trusted Mord I mean, Hammond. The king trusted Hammond, the, the man he promoted. And he said, okay, kill them all. So the decree was signed by the king. Hammond used the ring that the king gave him to seal it. And it was sent out. And everybody knew that the Jews' time was limited. It devastated Mordecai, the Bible says. It, the, the way it reads is like he went into a, a, a dark depression. And when the niece, the queen, heard about what was going on, she too was a Jew, so she was between a rock and a hard stone. She sent a message to her uncle, and she said, you know, I can't do nothing about this. It's not my time. But her uncle made it be known to her that it is her time. Could it be? Could it be God allow all this to happen to you for a time such as this? That empowered Esther. And she asked the Jews to, to fast for her uh, for three days. And she was going to go uh, before the king. But she let it be known also that if I do all I can do, and if I perish, I'm going to perish with my people. Amen. So Esther 5 and 4. And Esther answered, no, no, I'm jumping. The third day, the third day came. And Esther cat got herself up. It still wasn't her time to go before the king. She went before the king anyway, empowered. And he favored her. And he said, What, what, what you want? And answered, and Esther answered it saying, if it seemed good unto the king, let the king and Hammond come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. And so when Hammond heard this new high-minded Hammond, it, 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 he went all day full of joy, five and nine. Then when Hammond went forth that day joyfully with a glad ear, but when Haman saw Mordecai, when he saw Mordecai, he was full of indignation. So although Haman was hot at the sight of Mordecai, the Bible says that he refrained himself because he had a new priority. He had to go boast and brag to his family. But the Bible says every time, every time that he saw um, Hammond, he got full of wrath. He got full of anger. You know, Hammond was that guy that, as they call it, he sets it off. When he gets mad, it's going down, you know? But when he went home to brag to his family, his wife and everybody, it was those people who convinced him to make gallows to hang one man, Mordecai. So, 
That same day, it seems, in the writing, that the king that night couldn't sleep. The Bible talks about the king when they was having a hard time sleeping. I think it was King Saul, how Saul sent for the psalmist, David. Um, this king, he sent for the book of records to be read to him. And there he found out what more, who it was that saved his life. Found out that nothing had been done to him. And then he says he wants that man. He wants that man to be recognized. All right. Let me move on. Esther 6 and 3, it says, And the king said, What honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai for this? The king's service that ministered to him said, There is nothing done for him. The king wanted answers right then and there. And at this time, who comes strolling around the gate? It was Hammond, Hammond and Hammond. Hammond. The Bible, I think they said that he had just came from making the gallows. But the king said to him, and now also he was coming through the court from my understanding so that he can go tell king, the king he wanted to kill. He wanted to hang Hammond. I mean, to hang Mordecai. Hammond went to the king. He was on his way to the king to tell the king he wanted to hang Mordecai. But the king had another news <laughs> about Mordecai. Say it backfired. So Hammond, um, the king said, let the royal apparel horse crown be brought and be used to present to Mordecai. Ain't that some backfire? And the king said, let it be known. Let, let nothing that he said, not one act, fall from the ground. It backfired right in the adversary's face. I wonder... Uh, how did Mordecai feel, Mordecai, when Hammond was the one who had to come and bring him this good <laughs> And old Sour puss Hammond, he was supposed to go in the gate with Mordecai. No, he went home. He went mummering and complaining, mummering and complaining so much so long, they had to come get him. Because remember, he was supposed to be at a, a banquet with the king and the queen. So here it is. Let me go down to my notes. Here it is. So at the banquet, it, it was more than uh, one day. And um, how mounted Hammond? had to sit there two days before the king asked the queen, what is it? Why you want us together like this? And this is what she said. And this is Esther 7 and 4. For my people and I have been sold to those who would kill, slaughter, and annihilate us. If we had merely been sold as slaves, I, the queen, could remain quiet. For that would be too trivial a matter to warrant disturbing the king. Who would do such a thing? The king demanded. Who would be so presumptuous as to touch you? my queen. And Esther replied, this wicked man, Haman, is our adversary. Haman grew pale with fright before the king and the queen. Tell him it backfired. It backfired. The Bible says that the king's words, once he said what he said, it covered Hammond's face. Ain't that something? Mm. 
it backfired. And then one of the servants even told the king, how about this, king, king, Haman just made some gallows to hang Mordecai. <laughs> and in verse 9, the king said, hang him thereon. <laughs> there are lyrics to an old quartet song. It says, if you dig one ditch, you better dig two. The trap you set just may be for who now? You. Verse 10, so they hung him. And the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai, with the, with the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. So I'm going to end with the talk with town views by saying this. One, don't you be like high-minded hammer. And then, then, if someone is treating you like high-minded hammer is, Know that it will eventually backfire. Don't you be trying to um, put anything in the engine to make it, to stuff it, to make it backfire. No, you keep your hands clean. God got this. It's a bigger, it's always something bigger than a problem. God has a reward for you, you Mordecai's out there. You that stood on the wall, he, the word, he has a great reward for you because you will not bow to the high-minded Hammonds. Amen. Amen. That was good. And again, thank you. Thank you to 43 viewers, the, the 43 subscribers. I want to thank you very much. And until next week, do you want to talk with Tam? 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 Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Say, do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Do you want to talk with Tam? Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam. Talk with Tam.